today on Dr. Phil. She said the boys were standing around her all in their underwear. That is incorrect. Investigators accused high school students of raping a 16-year-old girl during a house party. With four football players charged. The four boys are guilty of only four judges. The alleged victim speaks out. They violated my body. He says you initiated this. I don't remember initiating anything. The exclusive interview. I just want her to come out with the truth. Now. Did he force you to have sex? The powerful conclusion. Every time you turn on the news, there's another story about teenage boys accused of taking advantage of young and inebriated girls. Well, this time, the story involves a star football player from North Carolina and three of his buddies. On a Saturday in December of 2012, these four boys decided to have a small party. No parents were present, but there was alcohol, and the only other guest, just one young girl. Now, Matt, the football star, says they had consensual sex. But the alleged victim says the boys are lying. She says she was raped. Matt's parents, Mark and Diane, say their son is innocent. Take a look at what happened yesterday. Today, four Western North Carolina high school students accused of rape are scheduled to face a judge. The Henderson County Sheriff's Office arrested these four teens. Vincent Curdo, Matthew Bishop, Tyler Guerin, and Justin Ponder. They all go to East Henderson High School and face adult charges of second-degree rape. The teens bonded out of the Henderson County Detention Center last evening. Investigators accused them of raping a 16-year-old girl during a house party where alcohol was involved. I'm not a rapist. I had consensual sex with a girl and she wanted to. Matt is very good looking. He's charismatic. He's charming. He does not have to get someone drunk to have sex with him. I feel like the girl has a big responsibility in this because when she showed up to the party, she was the only girl. If the girl wanted to leave, all she had to do is make a phone call. She may be more responsible for this situation than Matthew. There were four boys, one girl, and a bottle and a half of vodka. Did it ever occur to you, this is not smart? Um, yes, sir. You're a police officer, correct? Yes, sir. So you know this looks bad at this level. The fact that she was willingly drunk and you were drunk just doesn't excuse this. I asked that question of my Twitter followers, and people got upset at even asking the question let alone offering it as a defense. Girls have sex being drunk all the time. So if you're going to go ahead and say that every girl that's ever been drunk has been raped, then that is unfair. My problem with this is why is she not accused of rape? She started with him. He is a boy. She tells a different story than me. Okay? Yeah. But you want to know what she says, yes. right? There were five of you there that night, correct? Four boys plus yourself? Yes. Was there anybody else there? No, but there was supposed to be. How did you go from being around the bar to winding up having sex with who? I actually don't quite remember. I remember going upstairs because Matt, I, one of them were carrying me upstairs and they set me down on Matt's lap and I kind of got really dizzy and then I like kind of stood up because I noticed they were unbuckling my pants and my shirt. Were you able to say stop? I don't remember. Did you ever think about calling anyone to come get you? The alleged victim says everyone in her school was mad at her for taking away their star football players. She says maybe if they hear her side of the story, they would have more compassion. We continue today with my exclusive interview. Calling anyone to come get you? Honestly, I, I didn't know who I would call. I was at a sheriff's house. What am I going to say? I've been drinking at a sheriff's house, and I didn't figure they would do something like that. Okay. I assumed the best out of them, considering I had hung out with them before, and especially together, they'd never done anything to me. Right. And um, so who was the first one that you had an encounter with that night? 
it was Matt. And um, I'm not completely sure because I just remember him getting off of me and they were all standing around him. Mm -hmm. Okay, was, and, and I understand that there were things that happened that night that you didn't want to happen. Was it okay with you that that happened, that it happened with Matt? Honestly, no, because I was still mad before. at him. And it was, Tyler was letting it happen. So no, I was not okay. Mm -hmm. If I meant anything to Tyler, he wouldn't have let that happen. If it had ended then, just you and Matt, w would you have complained? Honestly, probably. I mean, basically the only reason I didn't want to was because I cared about Tyler and I didn't want anything to happen to him when I found out what happened because I had no memory of it until like two days after. No memory of? What happened. Okay. I just knew something was wrong. Mm -hmm. When you say you knew something happened, did you know that just mentally and emotionally or did you know it physically? Both. Okay. And plus, they also deleted all of their texts and everything off of my phone. And the next day, Tyler had texted me like nothing ever happened. Mm -hmm. And that's when I found out they did that. And it just, that's when I really knew mm -hmm. something had happened and they didn't <clears throat> want to be associated with me. When, when you had this encounter with Matt, did... Did he force you to have sex, or were you willingly having sex with him? It was basically forcing, because I didn't have a... I didn't see it till he got off of me. And they were uh -huh. all standing up in their underwear. Uh-huh. So you didn't know that this was happening until he was getting off of you? And for all I know, that <clears throat> might have not been the first time that night. Mm-hmm. I mean, it could have been one of the other people that was first. Mm -hmm. Well, you listened to the interview that I did with Matt and his parents. Yes. And he says that you initiated this, that you took him by the hand and led him uh, to a place to, to do it, that you wanted to do it. Honestly, I don't remember that. I don't remember initiating anything. He said after you, um, the two of you were together, that you said you wanted more. Is that true or false, or do you recall? That, that is false as I can recall. Are you upset about what happened that night sexually, or are you upset because they didn't have anything to do with you afterwards? I'm upset because of what happened. I mean, they did try. Tyler texted me the next day. I didn't want anything to do with him. Mm -hmm. The fact that they took everything from me. Mm -hmm. I had nothing left. And what did they take from you? They, they violated my body. I don't even know what they did. And the fact that I can't remember, that hurts the worst. Like, they could have done anything, and I wouldn't know. Mm -hmm. Nobody, like, everyone basically shunned me at school because I took away their star football players, even though I tried my hardest not to. They took away all my friends. I had no one left. What do you mean you tried hard not to? When I went to the sheriff's department, I told them, that I don't want to pursue anything. And they told me it was, and my dad, and everyone told me it was out of my hands because it wasn't me against the boys. It was basically a state against the boys. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but you signed a complaint. Yes. Do you remember having sex with Matt, having an, an interaction with Matt? And I'm, I, I keep calling it an interaction because if this happened the way you said, that's not, not sex, it's right. during it. I don't remember during it. I remember getting up. And so you know that that happened with Matt. Yes. And do you remember it with Tyler? 
Yes, because he was saying rude things and he was hurting me. Physically? That is why they made up their nicknames. And what were their nicknames? Tyler was Hammer. Tyler was Hammer. Matt was Pool Stick. Pool Stick, okay. What was Wesley? I can't remember. And Vinny? I think one of them was Xbox. Xbox, okay. Were you raped that night? I was raped. By multiple boys? Yes. And... They deserve the worst for what they had done and what they're still doing to this day. But I just want them to know how how this can affect a girl and how girls feel. When a girl doesn't want to, she doesn't want to. How has this changed you? I have PTSD now, so I just, I could be walking down the street like I'd never know, but I would just start bawling my eyes out. I assume the fact that everyone knows who I am, and that makes me scared to meet or talk to anyone. I, for months after that, I had wished I had died that night so that I would not have to live with the pain and I would not have to live with all the ridicule of everyone telling me that I'm in the wrong and that I did something wrong. Why did you want to be here today? What did you hope to accomplish? I wanted to help other people. Well, my gosh, I think you've done that. I mean, you and I are here alone, but there are millions of people that are hearing every word you say, and this is a cautionary tale. This is a, a warning to, to every girl out there uh, to protect themselves and speak up for themselves and stand up for themselves. I, I think you've done exactly what you wanted to do. The truth is better than holding it in. Because if you hold it in, it will consume you. You've told your story and stood up for yourself and you should be proud of that. I I'm really sorry this whole thing has happened. And I'm, I'm sorry that you've gone through the turmoil that you've gone through. And I'm glad you came here and told your story. I really am. I'll talk to you in a bit, okay? All right, thanks. Up next, Matt and his parents react to the alleged victim's account of what happened that night. Matt was a star high school athlete with a 3.6 grade point average, but in December of 2012, he was charged with second degree rape. Now he says his future is unclear. Take a look. You know, after all this is over with, you're gonna be okay. And even if the worst possibility comes out, you will survive this. I try not to worry about Matthew's future, but yes, I am worried. If this goes to trial, I really don't feel like he will be found guilty. The four boys are guilty of only poor judgment. I feel really bad for Matthew having a year of his life or even longer taken away from him. If Matthew was found guilty of this crime, then he could go to prison for 20 years. It's devastating. My biggest fear is the unknown because I don't know what's gonna become of it. Well, I've just finished speaking with the alleged victim in this case. Everyone had an opportunity to hear her account of what took place that night. I'm back now with Matt and his mother, Diane, and father, Mark. Um, you guys were able to hear mm -hmm. everything as she was able to hear what you had to say. What do you say to the account that she had to say? Um, it's shocking that she was going to lie about that. Mm -hmm. um, I do not throw myself onto girls. I don't cheat on girls. I don't do any of that. What else did you hear her say that was bothersome to you? It was clear that she didn't want to go forward with it. it I, I really do feel like she was embarrassed. And I think the boys, you know, I think if, if, 
Poor judgment, yes, on the boys. It is definitely poor judgment. But she has some poor judgment in that as well. Mm -hmm. um, during the evening, she said that you had a, went out to have a team meeting. Did that happen, and what was that about? No, sir. Um, I don't even know what the team meeting was about. Um, I'm not aware of it, so... Did anyone, to your knowledge, tell her that there were going to be two other girls there? Not to my knowledge. You didn't tell her that? I didn't tell her that. And you don't know of anybody else telling her that? Um, I wasn't the one on the <clears throat> phone trying to get her to come over or anything like that. That was Wesley and Tyler that was talking to her. Mm -hmm. She said at one point she came back into focus and the boys were standing around her all in their underwear. That is incorrect. There was only, I was only down there with me and her and the rest of them were upstairs to my knowledge. Uh -huh. So there was never a time that... All of us were down there yeah. at one time, no sir. Mm -hmm. Anything else that jumps out at you from what she said that you want people to know? Yeah, uh, one thing is I think she was mad at Tyler. I mean, this whole thing is kind of revolving around Tyler. She was mad at Tyler, and, and it's like, bam. I mean, that's what I got out of that, that talk. She was mad at Tyler, and she had sex with Matt to get back at Tyler. And therefore, you know, then she, had, she wished Tyler would have stopped her from having sex with Matthew. But she chose to have sex with Matthew that evening. Mm -hmm. She chose to. She initiated that sex. She says she cannot remember, but she initiated that sex with my son. The superintendent took all the boys out of the school. Instead of them being innocent until they're proven guilty, we automatically put a guilty label on. What would you do different in this situation if it were, if you got a do-over? I wouldn't have argued with my parents to uh, stay the night there. Well, that's a good partial lesson. Uh, I was hoping you would say you wouldn't have gone over there to begin with, and you wouldn't have been drinking illegally, and you wouldn't have been involved in sex with one girl and four boys and all of that. But well, yes, sir. But staying home or not spending the night there is good too. If if I wouldn't have asked them to stay, none of this would have happened. So that's the big thing: is none of it would have happened if I didn't argue with them to stay. What, what do you want for her? Um, I just want her to come out with the truth and quit saying that she was incapable of remembering or all that. Mm -hmm. all right. You came here uh, to tell your story. You came here for people to see you, look you in the eye, yes, sir. answer some hard questions. All of this, just the allegations, not even a conviction, but allegations, have narrowed his educational opportunities to the point that he no longer has honors classes available to him. And so it's slowed down his educational progression tremendously. Is that right? It has. Yes, sir. Um, the superintendent took all the boys out of the school. And, and I understand why they take the boys out of the school. Uh, there's three other high schools in our county. But they put them at a, I'm, I'm going to say an alternative school, but it's actually a vocational school now. Instead of them being innocent until, until they're proven uh, guilty, we automatically put a guilty label on them. Mm -hmm. And therefore, when we do that, they just shove them off to the side. I mean, you've got kids that, that are active in sports. You've got kids active in the community. You've got kids uh, working. And these kids have suffered in all three of those areas. Well, what you're saying is this has really disrupted his academic progression. It has. Yes, sir. And you're saying he may beat the rap, but he ain't beating the ride. Right. No, he's and not. getting from A to Z is, is, is very painful. And, yes. And, and you understand he has to take ownership in part of that.
correct. Uh, oh, yes. If he's falsely accused, then that is unfair. But you also put yourself in harm's way with really bad choices. Yes, sir. And if you raped that girl, you should pay for it. At a minimum, you made bad choices, and you are paying for that. And this is a cautionary tale for teens all over the country, mm -hmm. uh, boys and girls alike. Come on, you know, let's think. And parents, got to be dialed in. You got to know. You, you got to understand where your kids are and, and what they're doing. And I hope you didn't do this. And if that's true, I, I hope that this comes to a good conclusion. And I, I hope you take a serious, serious lesson from this, whichever way mm -hmm. that it goes. And, yes. and I, I, we're going to do just a couple of things before the end of the show. And I want you all to listen to those things. I want you to listen to mm -hmm. some of these things. Because we're going to next talk to a mother uh, that wants to speak out. She says she is tired of people blaming the victim. She would know. Her 15-year-old daughter was allegedly gang raped at a party. Now we're going to hear from her when we come back. Seventeen-year-old Rotea Parsons died last week after trying to hang herself. The Canadian teen's family says she was raped by four boys in 2011 and then humiliated and bullied after a photo of the alleged incident was texted to high school classmates. Friends and family of Rotea Parsons gathered for an emotional farewell to the 17-year-old. I just really wish that people stood up for her. In 2011, 15-year-old Retea Parsons attended a party, drank alcohol, and then was allegedly gang-raped by four male classmates. The boys allegedly took photos of the assault and shared them with their school. And Retea was then bullied and bullied relentlessly. But her story didn't end there. The police didn't think they had enough evidence at the time to charge anyone of the crime, so for two years she was hunted with of that night, called names and blamed for something that she says she had no control over. In April of this year, her mom Leah says she could no longer take it, and tragically, young Retea took her own life. My 15-year-old daughter was drinking with some people she knew from school. She said that they were drinking some vodka shots straight. Her friend and four guys, she remembers two guys taking turns on top of her. She then heard one boy say, take a picture, and the guy was behind her raping her. Four boys raped Retea. A picture appeared at her school of her that evening. It was a picture of her being raped. So people came up to her and started talking and saying, oh my gosh, you know, you're such a slut. And uh, she didn't have any idea what they were talking about. She was harassed immediately. We reported it to the police. Facebook pages started popping up uh, negatively about Retea and horrible images, her with a noose around her neck, people trying to gain support for the boys. That was very upsetting. And that went on for months and months and months. She's never the same again. Her friend was staying with us. She said, Lee, I think you need to come upstairs. I'm really worried. I said, why, what's the matter? She said, Retea locked herself in the bathroom and she said she's gonna kill herself. So. Uh, I went up and pop open the door. I could feel her body on the back of the door. So I just opened up the door and she was hanging by her neck. I didn't believe she was dead though, I didn't. I think I went in shock. After my daughter died, I made a memorial page for her on Facebook and I said, this is what happened. My daughter's gone now because of this. And it just kind of took on a life of its own. The media started contacting me, and uh, her funeral was a few days later. That's pretty much when the other the family started uh, putting up signs on our street. Speak the truth, support the boys. And even most recently, like, Retea's father received a death threat. If he doesn't shut his mouth, he's going to end up the same place as daughter is. So the police reopened the investigation. I think it's disgusting that it took my daughter's suicide for the authorities to take this seriously. They should have taken it seriously right from the start. Out of the four boys, two have been brought up on charges of distributing child pornography, and one with the additional charge of making child pornography. 
Nobody is going to be charged with the rape of my daughter unless new evidence comes forward. What message does that send? You can rape people and get away with it? Malia, thank you for being here. I'm terribly sorry to meet you under these circumstances, and I'm s terribly sorry for your loss. How did you learn about this? What did she, was she able to tell you about this? Um, so the rape happened on a Saturday evening. The pictures in the following Thursday. So I didn't know anything about it till the day after the, the pictures circulate. She was raped while throwing up um, out a window, right? Yes. That, I mean, she was clearly sick, clearly unable to protect herself. Um, and pictures were taken and passed around of that moment, right? One picture was taken. Yeah, yes. one was that, it was taken of that moment. That moment. Um, and when, when she found that out and she knew that this was being passed around in a, in a big joke, what did this do to her? It destroyed her soul. We thought going to the police would be the right thing to do. We went the next day and gave a statement. And um, she told everything that she could remember of that night. And then the harassment started. Mm -hmm. So when she arrived at school on that Thursday, they, um, there was already a story circulating. They had already told everyone that she had sex with four of them. What do you think about the story that we talked about earlier? It was so similar to what happened to Matea. It was very upsetting. He didn't say, maybe I would help her. She's drunk. He didn't say that. You did what anybody would try to do. You moved, you changed schools, um, you, you deleted the social um, media. You got her off of all that. You unplugged, mm -hmm. essentially. Um, but for her, it lived on. When she changed schools, uh, the photo would pop up again. Mm -hmm. And she didn't know at any point that photo could come up again. The school did nothing to stop that photo from being circulated. And the police did nothing to stop that photo from being circulated. Mm -hmm. Then she started getting texts from guys saying, hey, let's get together as a group here. Let's have group sex. Let's do this. You know, with my friends, well, let's get together and do it. <clears throat> Why can't we get together? Now, two of the four have been charged and the other two have not. Will they be charged? I don't think so. You don't think so? Mm -hmm. And the charges are about distributing pornography because she was underage, child pornography, you know, take, creating it and then distributing it, but nothing about the rape itself. No, they, uh, they said there's not enough evidence. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about that? I feel sick because what message is that sending out to uh, people that you can, you can rape and get away with it? What do you want people to know? Well, number one, uh, I had to teach my daughter about protecting herself. I had to always teach her, if you're in a room with more than four boys, you know, more boys than girls, you have to leave. Don't walk in the dark, walk with your friends. It, I had to try to protect her against rape since she was, you know, 12, 13 um, years old. Uh, she ended up taking a chance, you know, she did drink. Yes, she made that mistake. She was in a vulnerable position and, she, and they chose to rape her. They should have chose to help her. Somebody should have chose to say, this is not OK. So if I have to teach my daughter to protect herself, why aren't other parents teaching their sons about consent and what consent is? And then if a girl is in that position, she's not an object to be taken advantage of and take turns on. She's a human. What is wrong with the moral compass that one person in that room would step up and say, hey, stop, time out, this is not okay. That not one person in that room would step up and say that. And even after the fact, zero accountability. Their faces are hidden because they're under the Youth Act. What about, what about her? When she was, she was humiliated, she was shamed right out of her, her own community. 
But this is the victim blaming, and this is what the other supporters will try to say is um, rape, you blame the victim, and you look for... What do you think about the story that we talked about earlier in the show today? It was so similar to what happened to Rattay, it was very upsetting. And to sit there and see the parents blame the, blame the female and zero accountability for what their son did. And him sit there and say, what did you do? What would you do different that night? He didn't say, maybe I would help her. She's drunk. He didn't say that. Well, I think maybe a lot of kids would say it after what you've had the courage to share with us. We're going to have to take a break. We're going to add somebody to the conversation. Because coming up, a 17-year-old girl speaks out for the first time. We'll be right back. <laughs> Two years ago, when Alexis was 15 years old, she was at a party drinking. She says a boy gave her four drinks. She says she practically passed out, and then that boy took advantage of her. She wants Matt to know that just because she was drunk, it doesn't mean it was consensual. She's here with her mom, Nicole. Um, Alexis, Nicole, I'm, I'm glad you guys are here. I'm sorry what has happened uh, in your life. and. You know, we're talking about this because this is a cautionary tale for everybody, right? Alexis, what do you want to add to this conversation? What do you want to say? My whole life was ruined. I, I could have been Rotea very easily. There were so many times what I just wanted to take my life. People were so mean to me, so mean, saying that I did it for attention and that I'm making it up for what? Why would I make up this story? Why would I move schools and ruin my life? You know, I was very well liked. I was a cheerleader at my school. What would you just ruin my life? Why would I make something like that up? And guys just getting away with it is sick. You know, you can't do something like that to somebody. Like, how would you feel if somebody held you down and did that? It's just treating people like animals. It's disgusting. Nicole, what do you want to say? First of all, I'm so sorry for what Leah has gone through. As a mother, that was my biggest fear because we almost lost Alexis a few times. I'm outraged that this is going on all the time and nothing's being done. The justice system, wants to sweep it under the rug and pretend like it's not going on. Boys are getting away with it and they know it. And so it's happening more and more. I'm here hoping that people will stand up and fight against this. Please, for all young women out there, fight against it. This doesn't have to happen. Girls don't have to lose their lives like Rotea or feel that they can't go on another day like Alexis has gone through. Yeah. I'm hoping somehow that there's a change. And I just want all the girls out there to know, like, I was there. I almost committed suicide so many times, you know? And I just want them to know that it's been two years and I am so happy with my life right now. Alexis, you, you know that Everybody that's watching this show right now, that this is all a big wake-up call, right? Yeah. There's I, not yeah. any part of it that's okay. You, no. There are drinking age laws for a reason. Yes. Because the teenage brain is not ready to handle those intoxicants. There are, there are so many lessons here about taking care of yourself and taking care of your friends. Yeah. And you know, Le Leah has a, a great motto now that I think is just terrific. She says, don't take advantage, take them home. Yeah. Don't take advantage, take them home. And 
if, if somebody had stepped up and said, hey, Rotea, maybe I don't even know you that well, but I'm taking you home. I'm going to do something right today. We'd be in a very different place right now. There are big questions about this, um, but I, I hope the lessons are clear. Uh, there's responsibility here. Parts. We'll talk about that when we come back. What is not being said to these boys by the parents? We talk and we say things like "do the right thing," "stand up for people," but we don't say how. I have a guest today who knows a little something about the mentality of high school boys and girls. Now, you may know her from her best-selling book, Queen Bees and Wannabes. Well, she's a friend of mine. We've worked together before. She has a new book, Masterminds and Wingmen, helping your son cope with schoolyard power, locker room tests, girlfriends, and the new rules of boy world. So please welcome author and educator, Rosalind Wiseman. <laughs> Rosalind, thanks for being here. You, I, what I love about this book, which I have read, and let me tell you, parents, if you have a son or a daughter, you need to read this book uh, because it's going to give you the ability to not only have a dialogue with them, but to understand a lot of things that aren't being said at the time, to understand the power structure in which they live and the currency that they use within that hierarchy. And you write about this from that unique perspective of an educator, having been in the system and seeing this going on. Um, so first off, what in the world is happening? Steubenville and our story now today What's going on here? Well, I think we're not talking to our kids in ways that they can hear. We're telling them, don't have sex, don't drink. Those are the rules. And then we're not explaining to them how to actually go through really complicated social dynamics and apply our values in those moments. And certainly with boys, we are not talking to them about the possibility that they would witness or even participate in something. And as a mom of two boys, I understand that. You don't want to think of your children in this way. But we're talking a lot to our girls about this, but we're not talking to our boys. Can we say things like, do the right thing, stand up for people, but we don't say how. And so that's why it's so important to be able to say things in ways that are concrete and the kids can apply. Because otherwise, when they're actually in the situation, when they're drinking, and when there's all, and they've had a lot of entitlement because they're athletes or for whatever reason that they have social status in the school, they think that this just doesn't seem odd to them. None of this, if you ask the kids, they don't think that this is odd or abnormal. They never do. They no. think this is just what we do, and this time it got out of hand. You say on page 38, talking about boys, they know that being popular doesn't mean that people like you. It means that people know you and realize it's not worth confronting you in a conflict. Absolutely. What do you mean by that? I mean that when the boys are in that party or in that, when they're hanging out and those, there are popular boys in that room, that another boy, even if he's been told by his parents, do the right thing, whatever that is, as general as we, as we say it, that when he sees that boy, he knows that he has no ability to confront him because if he confronts him, he will lose. There is nothing that he can do. Most boys feel that there's nothing they can do in that moment that actually will change the dynamic. And so when we say things like, well, if that was your sister, would you do that? For most boys, that's not what's going on. What's going on is that they have been in a relationship with a friend and someone that they know, and they don't feel that there's any point in being able to confront them. And I have to tell you, especially for boys in groups where some of those boys have power and their parents have power in a community, the boys know or believe strongly that there is no way that they can confront that power because the parents will come down and all of the power of the community will come down. There's no point in speaking out. Well, you know, Leah's daughter, Ratea, had no one to stand up for her when she was at that party. What honestly, the hell? honestly, I think we are not talking to kids beyond sound bites. We say, stand up for what's right, but we don't say what that looks like. And so there's a huge disconnect between what parents are saying and what kids think is realistic. Yeah. We have a lot of young men in the audience today. Uh, raise your hand if you're a guy that's 20 or under. Yeah, look at this. Um, 
you guys are at risk. If, if, I mean, they are at risk if they don't get that when you choose the behavior, you choose the consequences that go with it. Our Twitter is blowing up on this. Uh, Pamela Swain says, uh, Dr. Phil, parents need to be held responsible too. They can allow boys to think having underage sex is okay. Cassie Warren ST says, set clear guidelines with your boys about sex. If they don't have the right information, they make it up as they go. Listen, I want to thank all of my guests today. And by the way, the book is uh, Masterminds and Wingmen, Helping Our Boys Cope with Schoolyard Power, Locker Room Tests, Girlfriends, and the New Rules of Boy World. And everybody in the audience is going home with a copy. Okay? Thanks so much for being here.